Doors of Destiny. And um, in this service, I'm going to deal with something different. Uh, I'll get back to the uh, uh, defining moments on uh, next week. But I want to deal with something that I've, uh, I'm sure I've ministered on it before. But really, a few days ago, this, what, 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 what I'm going to talk about, it, it felt like it became an urgency in my spirit. Now, most of you know I've uh, been on this campaign of living long and strong. Now, as believers in the body of Christ, we cannot let that slip. Amen. 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 And I know it's been challenging uh, for many, especially throughout this year, and even to many in the body of Christ for the last few years. But you see, it can easily look as if you have absolutely nothing or no control or nothing to say about sickness and disease, or it can look as if you have no control or nothing to say even about death. And the picture like I say, the, the image, what we see, it, it, it's, it, it's very convincing. And I, I've, you know, I've been hearing uh, in the church for years since I can remember, you know, pertaining to these things on what God's will is, what God allows, when it's your time, it's your time. You know, God calls you home. Yeah. Well, God, he took that person. And it goes on and on. And one of the things you've got to remember, never forget, don't ever compare or judge the Word of God by a person's experience in life. I don't care who it is. Don't judge the Word based on another man's experience in life. See, don't judge everything that happens in life as a signature from God. See, God isn't signing off on everything that happens in life. And this is one area where we really make the mistake when it comes to someone that we may hold high in spiritual esteem. Now, Elder got up, you know, saying things in its scripture. But this is one mistake we make with that. Let's go to 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verse 7. 1 Samuel, and I'm going to move kind of quick. I think the scriptures, are they on the monitors? 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verse 7. If not, well, we're going to move kind of quick. And it says, 1 Samuel, 16th chapter, verse 7. But the Lord said unto, said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now there are a few things in that. But the, the key is, we look at the visible. 
In other words, we look at what it looks like. But God knows the heart. You can make note of this. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, For what man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. What am I saying? And I've said this for years. Outside of divine revelation, you really don't know what's in another man's heart. Now, this, 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 is, this, is, this is why I say, you know, uh, uh, we can make that mistake when it comes to someone we may hold in high esteem spiritually. In other words, you know, if Reverend so-and-so got sick and died, and I know he was a holy man full of faith, God must have taken him. Hmm. You don't have to turn to it, but if you remember in the book of Job, Job in the very first chapter was described as a perfect, upright man who honored God and who avoided evil. But we know what happened to Job had nothing to do with God. Job slipped into fear and unintentionally he invited Satan to wreak havoc in his life. Because he said it himself in Job 3.25, the thing which I greatly fear has come upon me and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. Now two things we got to remember. Number one, you really don't know what's in a person's heart at a particular time. I'm going somewhere with this. See, this is why I say stuff, can, it can seem so, and, 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 and I know we've heard some things. And this thing was just urgent. In my, now, I was going to continue whatever, and I debated on it. And, you know, and I said, well, maybe I just teach it on a Wednesday or such such. He said, no, the Lord said, no. On Sunday, you got a majority of people listening. Yeah. Not just here, but around. Yeah. And, 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 and I've heard this for years, especially when it comes to leaders. Like, I know so-and-so so is a man of God, is a woman of God. And, yeah, that is true. And I know they love God. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, they're full of faith. I know that. So, so if, if this happened to them, God must have had something to do with it. Hmm. Two things. Number one, you really don't know what's in a person's heart at a particular time. Because I think I said this a couple things. One of the things about fear, fear is a moment of doubt. Sometimes that's all it takes is a moment of doubt. You don't know what's in a person's heart at that time. Sometimes all it takes is just a moment of doubt. And then number two, don't judge the truth of what the word says by someone else's experience, including your own. Now, let's go over some familiar basic foundations. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30:19. Many of us know this, and I've been quoting this lately. 30th chapter of Deuteronomy, verse 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that
that both thou and thy seed may live. And as I said, we've, we've been dealing with this for some time. And God, he's, he's informing us, you know, the right choice to make, you know, in order to uh, avoid the other option <laughs> or the other way of life from choosing you. And according to Romans 8 and 2, you don't have to turn to it. According to Romans 8 and 2, there's two laws. There's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and then there's the law of sin and death. But the good news, Romans 8, 2 and 4 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Yeah. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So in other words, because of Christ, we've been made free. But you still have to choose to believe and receive what Jesus did. Can we go further? Let's go to John 10 and 10. And these are scriptures I know we know. 10th chapter of John, verse 10. It says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm going to quickly read you a few translations. Amplified Bible says, The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. In the Common English Bible, it says, The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life, indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. In the Jewish Bible, it says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life, life in its fullest measure. Life in its fullest measure. Now, keep, 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 always remember that. Fullest measure. Now, reading this John 10.10, 10, there are two assignments. The assignment of one, the enemy, the devil, obviously, is to kill. The assignment of Jesus is he came to give you life. All right? Two assignments. The devil comes to kill. Jesus came to give you life. The devil comes to kill. Jesus come to give you life. Now. Let's go to 1 John 3 and 8. 1 John, the third chapter, verse 8. It says, He that committed the sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. One translation says, the reason the Son of God was made manifest or visible was to undo, destroy, loosen, dissolve the works the devil has done. Yes. So now in other words, undo everything the devil has done. Strip him of his power to steal, kill, and destroy. Undo it. Undo it. Reverse it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 
I know some of this is going to mess with your brain, but it's all right. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And let's look at verse 12. I'm going to read quite a few verses. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 12. Now, if Jesus be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, if we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not? For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and you are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep or dead in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all, we of of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that have slept or that are dead. For since by man came death, by Adam, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and a power, and he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Now hold it there. Now there's a lot in this. But I want to emphasize on that, that, that verse 20 again. You know. Or rather, uh, 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 verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Death is an enemy. And if death is an enemy, it couldn't possibly ever be orchestrated by God. If death is an enemy. I know I'm messing with somebody's brain. Just stay with me with this. If death is an enemy, how can death be orchestrated by God? Come on, we read, it's on the big, is it on the big screen? Come on, we read it. You ain't got to be a, 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 a scholar prepared soldier school and ministry starting the fall semester soon to know this, to read what's on the big screen. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, because of Jesus, the power and fear of death is under your feet. Let's keep going. Let's go to Revelation. Come on, my brothers and sisters, watch me online. Don't turn me off. Just stay with. Just stay. With. First chapter of Revelation, verse eighteen. First chapter of Revelation, verse 18, Jesus says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have 
the keys of hell and of death. In the New Living Translation, it says, I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and the grave. So we said it earlier, Jesus came to undo what the devil did. So now he says, Jesus is saying, I now have the keys of death and the grave. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And let's look all the way down to verse 55. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 55. And some of these verses, I know we hear them at funerals. <laughs> 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what are we saying? Since Jesus has the keys to death and the grave, so now the question is, oh death, what happened to your sting? Oh, grave, what happened to your victory? That power has been swallowed up because the keys of death and the grave is in Jesus' hand. Hmm. How do we know? One of the things that happened after the resurrection of Jesus, is some of the saints got up out of the graves and started walking around in the city. How do we know that? Go to Matthew 27. On, 27th chapter of Matthew, verse 50. Usually we preach this around Good Friday and Easter time. 27th chapter of Matthew, let's look down at verse 50. And this is why Jesus was on the cross. It says, Jesus, when he had cry, uh, cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth quake, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Verse 52, this is key. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city, went to Jerusalem where this happened, and appeared unto many. This is not a misprint. But after Jesus' resurrection, and he now has the keys of death and the grave, the graves were open, and the bodies of a lot of those saints who were dead got out of those graves and went back to the old neighborhood so folk can see them. Come on, I, is, is this... I know that's, that's messing with some of our brains. Like, what? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, either we believe this or we don't. Yeah. His resident saints, they got up yeah. and walked around in the city. Yeah. Huh, that's my cousin. Yeah. We was just at your funeral last month.
Come on, it's right here. We're reading it. You ain't got to interpret it. See, I know sometimes we just think, oh, all power in it. He got the keys, and, and everything is about when we get to heaven. You know, in the Bible, there's only a small portion of, of heaven. Most of the Bible is about here. Graves were open, the bodies of the saints got out of the graves, went back, folk to see them. It's recorded. Because remember, Jesus, he got the keys. Keys can unlock. Death in the grave. Because he came to undo yeah, yeah. what the devil has done. Yeah. And the devil is behind death. Yeah. So Jesus, come on, you know what? The colonel man ain't going to comprehend this, and I get it. You're going to have to hear this in the spirit. And I know that's hard for some of us because we've embraced death for so long because you had preachers up here saying it. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. You know, my mama was a saint, and the Lord took her. My daddy was the reverend. But his job was over at 59, and the Lord took her. Oh, I say it. Because I got the scripture to back me up. You can't preach like this unless you're free. Mm. See, living life to the fullest measure is your covenant right now. It ain't just a promise, it's a covenant right. Can we keep going? Let's go to Psalms 91 and 16. I know we, we got to get a lot of stuff out of our head. Because I've heard it for years and years, too. You know, and most funerals, you hear a lot of this stuff. And then if we don't know what truth is, we, we believe. Well, I guess that do make sense. The Lord took, and I've said this for years. You know, and if we really believe the Lord, the Lord took your mama, took your daddy, took your brother, took your sister, took, took all of that, and then, then the same preacher's up here telling you, but trust God. That's hard for me to trust somebody who took somebody I loved away from me. Come on, can we just be honest about that? How are you going to trust the rapist who raped your daughter? Yeah, I know that was real wrong. Come on, we got to deal with this thing. Because I understand how it looks. And that's why I said in the beginning, it, it looks, it can appear convincingly like we don't have no say of what happened. That when your number is called, you got to answer. Yeah, come on, Pastor. Yeah, Pastor. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. 
Psalms 91, verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. One translation says, I will reward them with long life. Show him my salvation. Now, what does that look like? It's really reading the whole, the entire 91st number of Psalms. Let me quickly read it, but I'm going to read it out of the NLT. It says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from, it, from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the arrows that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. I know it's convincing because you watch it die around you. And it might be your cousin. But if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them, and I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. See, this is why I say long life is your covenant right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell somebody that, that long life long is my covenant right. And not just long life, but a satisfied life. In other words, God daily revealing his salvation to you. In other words, daily giving you new layers of joy, new layers of peace. New layers of prosperity, new layers of health and wholeness, all being revealed to you. He's showing you, he's unraveling, he's unveiling, he's pulling back his salvation. I go back to John 10. Two assignments. One assignment is to kill. The other is give you life. The one to give you life took the keys of death and the grave to the one who could kill. All right, all right, all right. I, 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 like I said, I know it's tough because I, I know, I know it's, it's yeah, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but, but, but. Let's go to Psalms 103. I'm going to be done in a minute. Psalms 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So he's saying these benefits here. He forgives all your iniquities. The, the, the easiest or the simplest way to, to, to think that is you, you don't ever have to walk around feeling condemned. Because we know in Romans there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. See, condemnation weakens the soul. And a sick soul can lead to a sick body. You, all, you missed it. Why? He said, I forgiveth all your iniquities. Because, see, 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 you, see, see without that forgiveness, there's condemnation. See, as born again believers, we never have to walk around being condemned because that condemnation will weaken the soul and when your soul is sick it will lead to a sick body heals all diseases not some all redeem your life from destruction in other words, the, the enemy's tactics, it can't destroy you. Because he's redeeming your life from any any, any, anything that, that can cause a destruction to your life. God, he, I, you've been redeemed from that. You've been redeemed. He, he's redeemed your life from, de, from destruction. Now, that's nothing new because uh, Galatians 3.13, that we've been redeemed of the curse of the law. And what's the curse of the law consist of? Spiritual death, sickness and disease, and lack in poverty. So he's saying here, once again, we've, he's redeemed our life from destruction. How does he reward me? With renewed youth. This is all in it. By giving me good things to say. Because we know the power of words. In other words, speaking and decreeing life over myself and not death. Come on, it's all in here. We made it complicated, but it's all in here. See, he's going to re reward me with, with renew you because he's going to give me things to say to speak over myself. Things of life, not death. Good things to say. Not me talking about this, Arthur Wright. Oh, this running my family. Oh, I got this. Oh, I got that. Come on, I ain't. Come on, y'all stay with me. I love you. I ain't coming against you. He give you what to say. Certain symptoms have came on me, but because he gave me good things to say, and I spoke over it and decreed all that crap out of me. Instead of going along with it, well, you know, I'm in my fifties now. Now, why is this so important? I'm going to wrap it up. Let's go to Proverbs 18. We all know this. Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. Amen. 
Now, once again, let me say, listen, don't, don't, don't judge and don't compare the truth of the word with your experience or somebody else's. I don't care who it is. Now, I've said this, and I don't reckon I've said it several times. I'm your leader, I'm your this or that, and, and the Lord tarries, I'm in faith for 120. But I'm telling you right now, if something crazy and off happened to me, in the next few years, you know what? Ain't nothing to God. I got off somewhere. I know everybody can't say it. I got off somewhere. Uh, see, uh, I, I can talk that way. I got off somewhere. Ain't, no, ain't the Lord way, you know, the pastor, I don't know why. I'm telling you why. Something happened to me early, it's because I got off somewhere. Uh-oh, that really, that's messing with somebody here. Come on, either we're going to believe the scripture or we're not. Well, I told you sometimes a little fear is just a moment of doubt. Just that damn moment. Just that moment. Oh, man. <sighs> Proverbs 18, verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. That's referring to his life. Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Yeah, yeah. Now, we know that death and life is in the earth. It's been set before us. But what do you choose? And your words will reveal your choice. Your words will reveal what you've chosen. Mm. My words were revealed by choice. I choose to live. See, and, and we can't keep playing these in and out games. See, we can't keep, we can't say, oh, I, I live today, then on Monday and Tuesday, you saying something else. And the heart doesn't know joking. Oh, I was just playing. The heart is soil. I use the example, it's like the soil like dirt. Dirt, dirt don't, you put an apple seed that you didn't mean to do that. The dirt don't know you didn't mean to do that. It's there to take it, to receive it. While we sitting over here joking, uh, well, I'm so tired, I don't know what to do. Boy, I'm getting crazy with my old self. Nobody like me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go on and on. Amen. Heart don't know jokes. Amen. That's why my wife would tell you that. And she don't do it anymore, but sometimes she say, well, guess what happened? I say, I don't guess. I don't tell. Because I've learned to, to not say things I don't know. I don't want to guess. I, I, I'm, I'm practicing to not say things that's not right. Say, guess what happened? Uh, what, so-and-so, so? No, that's not what happened. 
Okay, I'm too, that's too deep for somebody. I'm sorry, I'm on an assignment. See, either we believe either we believe this or we don't. And you can't just believe one part and not the other. Either we believe it all or none at all. Hmm. Now once again, and I close. Don't judge or compare. Maybe somebody you know with the word of truth. And I've learned and I'm still learning. And really, there, and maybe I'll get into this on, on Wednesday. There are several we- reasons why people, especially God-loving Christians, who die. Now, God, he obviously receives his, his children, but he's not taking them. He ain't calling them home. I've known this of, 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 of some people. I, I've been at hospitals with, 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 with some people who were literally kind of, that, that they looked like they was in between. And based on the knowledge we have of heaven, and, that, and that's only uh, the Apostle John, his only image when he tries to describe it, it's not really like it is like that. He only tries to describe it to the best of his ability about the streets of gold. You know, it's not that it's really like that. He just tries to describe it to the best of his ability. Where you can got a saint who, they like, they get a glimpse. And they ain't saying it's the will of God. Like, man, just a glimpse? I want to go. And it ain't like God called them, but he received them. And sometimes you just have some people who just, especially if they're dealing with sickness, sometimes they just get tired. See, there are different reasons. See, I ain't coming against nobody, but, but we got to end this with God calling people and a person's time was up. Now, either we believe the Bible. We, I know this is hard for some of you. I get it. I had to come to grips with that 20 years ago. And I had to ask some questions about some of my relatives. And I told you, listen, if any man lack wisdom, James 1, ask. If you ask, he'll tell you. There's a reason for everything. And it's not many times that, that people that they, that they ask to die, ask to get sick. But see, remember, that there's a cycle. You know, and there are things you, you put in place. You don't even mean no harm. Consciously, un- subconsciously, unconsciously. But you put in place. And that thing may not harvest up. It might take a year, two, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. Put in place. Yeah. Amen. I've said this uh, story before about a member used to go here years ago. And um, she had gotten cancer. Then when this happened, and she told me, I was a pastor, this is some years ago. And she said, at that time, she had thought this. She said the Lord, when she was a young, young teenager, the Lord had showed her how she was going to die, and she was going to get cancer. Now, you got to understand, this is what she had believed for many, many years until I tried to teach her faith in such and such such. And that was her, she was trying to battle with it. She was trying, and she eventually died. But see, that thing was so rooted in her. 
She was hearing what I was saying. She was hearing the scripture, but that seed had rooted so much in her that it came up. And, and she didn't mean no person who loved God. She just thought, like a lot of people think, that, 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 that God is behind all this stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That, that, not realizing it wasn't God, it was the devil, it was the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, he goes seeking. He doesn't have the power to just do this or that. He, he, he has the power to try to deceive and get you to act on it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And go down the line. Someone who loved God, going through a, 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 a challenge. And they start saying how much they miss their mother. And their mother is dad in heaven. I didn't made the mood go down. I got to give you the truth. You have to be careful of what you're saying. Yeah. I know that sounds real. See, see, I, I need to quit because I didn't. Some of y'all that closed up now can't can't receive. It. I ain't saying you don't miss people, but you got to be careful how you keep saying that. And I know I'm on there. Don't write me no letter because I ain't going to have the SPM people don't even tell me. That's why saints, you ain't got no business going to no graves. What are you going there for? You believe a person ain't there, what are you going there for? See, you, you, what you're doing is you're strengthening this image. And that's even, the devil know he's lost authority and don't have the key, but he'll try to deceive you. And now you got this image in your head. Oh, no, he, God is not calling. Biblically, we, we only know of Enoch, Elijah, and Jesus that God took up. And who God takes, there's no body left behind. Yeah. If God, if God, God take any, it ain't, ain't going to be no funeral. Because there ain't nobody. Who God took up, it wasn't nobody. Nobody left behind. We see a body here, God didn't do it. I know this is, this is, and I know it takes a renewal of the mind to do it, but trust me, there's freedom in knowing that. See, and I know a lot of us, and, and maybe some of us, they didn't know this, but see, I'm teaching it to you. So you can know it, and you start living it, and you don't have no fear of death and none of that other kind of stuff. And then you teach it to somebody else. Amen. See, when you get a revelation, all that, you don't have no fear of nothing. Some folks are afraid when they say, I'm afraid to fly. It's not they're afraid of the plane. It's fear of death. I don't go out at night. You ain't afraid of the dark. Do you sleep in the bedroom with all your lights on? You're afraid of death. And that don't make much sense now because folks doing stuff in sunshine, broad daylight. People even put people putting it on Facebook. Look at me. I'm robbing the stove. Ain't nobody no afraid of dark anymore. Now, I ain't coming against anybody. I don't want nobody feeling sad about their loved one. No, no, they, they, you know. Listen, we, we all get cut off because of lack of knowledge, what we didn't know. Just didn't know. And you can't do what you don't know. So 
So if you can't do what you don't know, you definitely can't have faith for something you've never heard. If you don't hear this, how are you going to get some faith for it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, like I said, this ain't to make nobody, and maybe, maybe I'll go in more depth on Wednesday, teach it, get into the 120 years, get into all of that, certain things and, and, and whatever. But this ain't to make nobody feel bad. No, but see, we've got to be very careful. Yeah. And especially what's been happening this year. You know, people have died. People have, I know that. But you can't, you, but, but you got to be careful that you don't lose focus. Amen. Or you fall into fear. Amen. But then if you don't know that, you'll be just like everybody else. Well, you know, this my time to go is just my time to go. Scripturally, you, 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 dicta- you, 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 you dictate the time. I was thinking about this. The, you know, I'll say this. God bless every heart. We'll see you this coming Wednesday. 7 o'clock Central Standard Time for Better Life Lessons. And perhaps we'll pick it up then. So you still love me. I know you love me if you watch me this Wednesday and I'll finish the lesson. Come on, let's give God praise in here. Wasn't that an exciting word today? It was so great, and I'm so happy that I was here to hear the word. We're not out of word, but today we're out of time. On behalf of Better Life Faith Church, we would like to thank you for joining us for our live stream today. Before you leave our page, we would love for you to follow us, like us, and share us with a friend or family. If you like today's message, you're more than welcome to give us a call down below, and we'll get that message sent out to you. If you would like prayer today, you can call us in one of our prayer rooms. would love to come into agreement with you for your breakthrough. But as always, God bless you. When you learn better, you live better.